We're Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels and have been full-timing since December of 2017. We have a Volvo heavy-duty truck of Leroy with our two Spider motorcycles, our DRV Mobile Suites, Dixie, and our smart car, Zippy. This video is on how to repack your wheel bearings on your RV trailer and inspect for uh, damages and also how to uh, replace the brake pads on the RV trailer. So, and, uh, and a woman in the background asking all the eh, lame questions is my wife. I heard that. Ah, no, actually, she uh, does pretty good. She had good questions to ask and it, it worked out well. So Dave, the first thing you had to do was lift this side of the coach up and you had to add a block underneath the leg there so it would get far enough off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So now, taking them. Whoop, taking the lug nuts off. Had some rain, so it looks like you sunk in the ground a little bit there. Oh, a little bit. You can take these this side in and get them balanced as well, huh? Yep. A little heavy. They are. So you've already inspected this side. These rotors are okay, right? Yeah. Those rotors are fine. What's going on, Dave? I'm just taking some of the old brake dust off the inside of the wheel. Is that a normal amount? Yeah. And That's all the balances they put on there? That's it. Oh my lord. How many you got there? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen of those, whatever they are. They're half ounces, so that's seven ounces there. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. What'd you pay to get them balanced? 50 bucks. 25 dollars a tire. 25 bucks a tire. So it's 100 bucks. It will be. Oh, you only got two of them back so far? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't done the other side yet. Oh, I see. Wow, I can't believe how to balance they were. Isn't that kind of hard on the ride of the... It's hard on the suspension. Yeah. Because it's always vibrating. Well, it can't be very good on the tires either. No. You think they'd balance them out of the factory. So, no balancing on the fa out from the factory then? No. Nope. Wow. A lot of people say, though, that tires this heavy and all that don't have to be balanced, but I beg to differ. And these are Goodyear 215 slash 75 R17.5. That's all that means. And they're H. I yeah. see that H there. What, where is it? Yeah, they're H rated. H rated. G114 Uni, Unisteel. Yeah. The tread wear look okay? Yeah. Yeah, that looks alright. These are original from 2015, right? Yeah. They're okay. original. So now that you got the tire off, what you doing? I'm just cleaning the brake dust off the rims. And all the garbage that built up on the inside of them. I'm not using any chemicals on it? No. Use a, that acid on them and it'll t eat your rims up. Be in there aluminum. Mm. Looking at the rotor, make sure that this one isn't cracked anywhere around and not scarred or anything like that. Do you have to it's, clean it off to be well, able to tell? Nah, you can look at it with the rest on there. And then I want to do the same on the back. Yeah, I use my little flashlight phone. Uh, I hear a little rubbing. What's that? That's the brakes. They'll do that. Is that all right? Yeah. Are you going to need anything new on there? I'm going to put new pads on it, new brake pads. And why is that? Well, they're a little thin, a little war. 
So you've, you've got one of these. With how heavy this trailer is, you don't you only get like about five thousand miles out of your pads. Really? Yeah. So what do you call this part that's rusted? This is the rotor, brake rotor. And you had a crack in one of them? Yep. So you're gonna have to replace one of them one so of far. You got one more to go, huh? Yeah. And then you replace all the shoes. Yeah, when I do that. I'll pull the whole hub off and repack all the bearings and all that, so. Okay. What's going on, Dave? Well, I had to change the rotor on the, on one of the, or the hub and rotor and brake pads on one of the wheels on the. I thought you were doing uh, all, aren't you doing all the brake pads? I'm brand? doing them all. But you just had one rotor. One rotor that was bad. There's a big crack in it right there. Uh-oh, uh, how'd you figure that out? I just, when I took the wheels off to uh, look at the brakes and repack the bearings, I noticed the rotor was cracked. Huh. And it's cracked all the way through. So, so. where did you get the other one at? I got it from uh, E-Trailers, brand new one. What'd that run you? About 138 bucks. And so, right now, where are the tires from the RV? They're in a tire shop right now. I'm having them balanced. 25 bucks a piece? 25 bucks a piece to have them balanced because they're such big tires. Oh, sure. So, you know, running down the, running down the freeway at high speed, probably a pretty good idea to have them balanced. True. And when I took them off, I noticed there was no balancing on them. Oh. Anywhere, so. Hmm. Got to have that done. So you're changing all the brake pads as well? Yeah. And where'd you order those from? Uh, E-Trailer. Oh, okay. What were, were those running you? Oh, what were they? Nine, forty-one dollars per axle. Okay, so you get two sets. So I got two axles worth for mm -hmm. eighty some odd bucks. Did you have any issues with braking prior to this? Was it feeling funny or anything? It was feeling a little jerky. Mm -hmm. When you go to stop, you kind of feel the the rear trailer jerking a little bit. So. What do you think was causing that? I think it was a broken rotor. Oh, okay. Because as the rotor heats up, it'll displace itself, and then bam, bam, you're hitting that bad spot all the time. Hmm. Okay. So. So you're it. taking all the rotors off, and the ones that are still good, you're repacking them then? Yeah. And how do you do that? Repack the bearings. Yeah. They take the bearings out, and I use brake cleaner. And you get in there and you spray that brake cleaner all in there and get out all the old grease and dirt and all that. Mm -hmm. And then you just repack them with new uh, grease and put them back in. Half inch socket. And there's two, two bolts in the back here if you want to give it a look see. There's a bolt right there. And another one like the same down here. And you take those out, and the caliper comes right off. Right. There we go. And the other one's down here. support the caliper because you take these bolts out you don't want to drop that caliper and wreck this line that brake line okay bolt number one your shoes, your brake shoes, and it, it took the whole thing out. Let's see, and this bolt's supposed to slide around in this thing, and it is not. So, 
really don't want to. We'll have to work on that, getting that sleeve off of there. Is the other one loose? Yeah. See, the, there's a sleeve right here oh. that those bolts go through. And this sleeve stuck to the. Can you point to it again? That little. Oh, that's supposed to be out of there. No, that's supposed to be in there. Oh. Well, this one came out. Oh. That's not supposed to come out. Let's see, here it goes. <sighs> yeah, they're supposed to slide around in there. See all that build up? Uh huh. What's that See the Elsa supposed to. Uh -huh. Like that. Just corrosion. Well, what you do is when you put these back in, you want to put some Loctite, thread Loctite on the ends. So when they screw in, then they won't back out. If these happen to back out on you while you're driving, <laughs> you don't have brakes. Your so brakes will fall how off. how would you get that out of there the next time you need to do this, though? Oh, you, you use Loctite that it's removable. Oh, okay. See, that goes in there like that. That one's sticking out a little bit, is that uh, all right? You can push them in and out. Oh, okay. They're made to move. I gotta free that one up. Or at least an inspection every year. Because we're full time and you probably have to do it almost every year, change these shoes, huh? And repack bearings? Yeah. These I just spread out like that. To get them off. You're not supposed to do that to the new ones, so the new ones just, just slip them on. And then you see the shoe come out. Let's see. That one don't look that bad, does it? Well, it's wearing on an angle. Oh. And it's a little, it's not as bad as the others. Because you still got some of the wear groove here. Yeah. But it, it's a little worn on the outside yeah. more than the inside. The new ones have this groove in it. And it's like a wear indicator. And when the groove disappears, it's time to change the shoes. Oh, okay. And as you can tell, they're, they were wearing unevenly, too. Mm. More from the top than mm -hmm. from the uh, bottom. And then this comes out of here. But this cup right here, if you left it in that position, you wouldn't be able to get it back on here with the new shoes because they're thicker. So you put that there, put the old pad in there. Why are the new shoes thicker? Because they're not worn out. Oh. <laughs> and then you put a clamp on there. Like that. Uh-huh. And you screw this clamp in. <coughs> and it compresses that cup. Was it just pushing it back in? Some? Yeah. Pushing that hydraulic cup back in there. Oh, I can see it moving a little bit. It's flush. Okay. And then you, you're good to go when you go to put the new shoes in. Did you find that out on the first one by mistake? Uh, no. No, well, I mean, just a learning curve where you just knew this? I knew that. Now, do you clean any of that stuff off of there, too? What stuff? The, ro the rust or any corrosion or anything? Yeah. On the... Uh, Rotor? Brake? No, the brake. Yeah, you clean it up a little caliper. bit. You get in there, check it all out, knock the dirt and junk off. All right, now to take the rotor off. You, why are you taking the rotor off? I want to inspect the bearings. I want to take them out and repack them. Okay. So you got to get this big bolt off of here. Or not bolt, but cap. It's a big plastic cap with a seal on it, bearings cap. Now is that, when you repack this, is that like the black stuff you might see come pouring out? When you go to inspect your tires and it's all over the outside of the... Yeah, the, that grease. Yeah, because you put too much in or yeah, what? Yeah, most of the time they put too much in or that cap has failed or a bearing back, a bearing seal back there has failed. Back where? On the back side of this hub. Oh. You'll see it okay. when I pull it out of here. And now we have to take... There's a retaining clip right here that you have to take off that keeps that nut from moving. So you're kind of being really careful about that. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up. 
Oh. Everybody keeps it on there. Oh, it kind of snaps then, doesn't it? It does. There it goes. It has a little detent there that goes in the little detent there. It keeps the nut from moving. Can you show me that again? Where is it at? Oh, that's kind of the uh, yeah, it goes the in, bend in there. Yeah, it goes in this little slot right here. Okay. And then, yeah, got the wrong size pliers, but wrong size channel locks, but these will work. Let me take this nut off. Looks like it goes on one way, too. Yeah. Oh, this nut. Yeah, it goes on. And then there's a washer in here. But, uh, I can get out of here. Come on out. There. The whole rotor's starting to move. Yeah. That's the bearing. And this washer's also keyed to fit on that hub or that axle oh, so yeah. it doesn't spin like that yep. fits on that flat right there uh -huh. and then it's all about hub time there it is as the bearing comes rolling out where was that it was in the front oh, okay. that's the front bearing all right and then you got the rear bearing and this is that seal that I was talking about right here. Oh, that you push back? No, that's no a bearing way. in there, but this seal's on the outside right here. It keeps all the grease from flying out the oh, back of it. Oh, okay. In order to get this bearing out of here, I have to remove the seal. And the seal's a one-time deal. You can only use it once. Once you remove it, it's no Hang good. On a second. Once you remove the seal, it's no good. So. There goes the seal. And there's the rear bearing. Now I'm gonna take that. See that, how it's kind of milky brown? Yeah. Means there's moisture in there. Uh-huh. And that's not good, right? It's not good. But uh the races in there seem to be fine. That's the thing the bearing rides on. Uh-huh. On this side at least. So I'll take all that and clean it all out. And I'll clean the bearings out. Wash all that grease out of there. What do you use to clean it? I use brake cleaner. Okay. What's good, it cuts grease and it uh it evaporates totally out of the bearing so you don't have to worry about leaving chemicals in your bearing to dissolve your grease as you're driving. So now you bought new seals. I got new seals. You bought those online? Yeah. E-trailer? Yeah. Would you? Okay. Seal. You see the, the box? Temkin seal. How'd you know what to, what to order? What size and stuff? It, uh, I did a cross actually. The ones that go in are a Kodiak, but I prefer Tempkin better because it's more solid. This isn't solid all the way through, as you can tell on the back, where this one is more solid. Show those together again. Oh, okay. So you just um, cross reference it on the internet someplace and purchase yeah. it from e-trailer? Yep, I ordered Tempkins. I just prefer Tempkins, that's all. Okay. So that's it. Now it's all about just clean, clean, clean. I uh, just wipe it all out. And there's going to be dirt up here around the edge. You want to make sure you get that all off of there. So when you're packing it back in, you're not putting all the dirt in it. There's really no nooks and crannies. So this doesn't have to be like a spotless sort of thing? Right. You're yeah. just going to put new grease in there, so just get right. out the majority of it. I did dig out you the majority of it. You could kind of inspect it. it then? Right. 
look for to see if it races this silver part in here is it all scarred or marred and if it is and if it is you have to replace the race which requires a press you probably have to bring it in some to an automotive store where they can press that out press a new one in You gotta check the race on that side. Yep. Try to clean all this out. Get the top of that too. Huh? Yep. What would you want to look for in this grease to see that there might be an issue? Metal shavings. Uh huh. Rust, water, things like that. And a lot of times your races will show a scar on them it'll be a circular scar or it'll be discolored it'll be like a dark brown which means it's had a lot of heat put to it so in that case you probably want to replace the bearings and the races take the bearings and wipe the majority of the grease off of them if you can So let me see which kind you got there. What kind you use? CRC brake clean. Brake parts clear. No big deal. Just any brand? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Get it off of the generator. I think I heard it. Watch it. Just spray it out there. And I just get in there and hose all that out of there. Yeah, it's like a pressure washer with. Yeah, chemical pressure washer. Get right down in between them. Blow that shit out of there. Oop, blow that stuff out of there. It looks a little brown inside. Yeah, these might have been heated up a little. I didn't want to think about getting new bearings. Oh boy. On this side. Oh, look at that one. Is that just dirty or is that heated up in there? Oh. Let me see. Looks like it. Let me see. Could have seen some heat. Whoa! Yeah. Were the other ones like that? No. What do you think? I'm thinking, do I want to replace these? Why are you listening to it? See if it's ticking or clicking. How smooth it's running. We'll go another 20,000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you didn't put that much on there. No. How many did you put? How many miles do you think you actually put on? About, what, 6,000, 7,000? You put it back in there and see how it runs? Yeah, without the grease. That one runs fine. Yeah, that sounds good. Feels good. No bumps or nicks or anything like that. I think it'll be fine. Good joke. Well, what kind of grease you got there? Red and tacky. Can you hold it? Lucas. And you use this one because? Eh, I like it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. No reason. I've always used it. Okay. Looks like the same color of the stuff you took out of there, yeah. too. So are there any what bearings in do? here yet or what? No. Okay. What you want to do is put a blob of grease in here around that race. That's that silver cylinder thingy inside. All right. With a bearing. With the technical rides terms. It. With the bearing thing. rides on it. All right, okay, get it in there good. Don't be shy. All right. Mm-hmm. Now for the bearing, you want to take a blob of this, 
put it in your hand. And then from the back side of the bearing, you take it and just work that grease in there like that. And you'll see it squirting up in between the rollers. And that means that you're getting full penetration with the grease in there. It takes some time to do. See the easing off the top? Yep. Uh, that's what Looks you like want. strawberry jelly. Yeah. You want to make sure all those cavities in there are packed with grease. All the way around, nice and greasy. Pack as much as you can in there. And then you want to set that baby right down in there and squish it in there. A little extra grease on top never hurts anyone. What if you do put too much grease in? It oozes out. It'll squirt out. Where's the squirt out Normally at? Normally the front. It'll come into that cup that's on the front of the hub. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, a little extra just for fun of it. Yeah. And then you see how the old one was. Uh, you really can't see it too well, but the beveled edge is facing downward. So, see the beveled edge right there? You want to put that in downward. So you just put that on there, like that, and then you slowly tap. And you drive it down to where it stops. Now you take this thing, flip the rotor over, like that. And you go back to the grease jug. And you pack this up with grease. This is the back side? This is the front. This is the front side. go through the palm again and you do the front bearing a lot of people just smear grease all over it and put it back in that isn't the way to do it there we go we got it packed all the way around yeah I guess you kind of recommend using nitrile gloves, huh? Yeah. And you put that baby in there, like that. Okay, when I put this thing on there, probably the bearing in the front's going to fall out. So keep your hands ready to catch it. Is that the wheel that that one's supposed to be on? That's the one. Okay, you always be careful to put everything back on the same... Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Watch that line back there. That's a brake line. Yeah, so no. I'm... Make sure you're not pinching no, it or I'm something. not pinching. Okay. It's nice yeah. and clear. Okay, here's your... All right, and there's your yeah. wash. You put that on. See, I can be helpful, too. Yeah. Then we get the nut. And I didn't bring my channel locks over. I'll have to go get them. And you just screw this on. Oh, let me get my channel on. What you want to do here is you take it, move the rotor a little, plug it. And then you figure out where this is. And that's going to be a little off. 
So you want to back it up about a quarter turn, maybe eighth of a turn. You never want to go too tight because that's where that thing will fit right there. And snap that back in, and she's done. And then you, very little play, that's all you want, just if any at all. That's it. Now you gotta put the brake shoes on. Yeah. Oh no, you gotta finish putting the... I put this hub on. You leaving the old grease in there? Yeah, this grease. It looks like it's in good shape. Doesn't have dirt in it or anything like that. So. Otherwise, if it was brown yeah, or anything, would I'd you clean it all out? Put more in there. Yeah, clean it out and just put a little bit more. They look in. wet there, or is that just grease? That's just there? grease. Okay. And then you just want to snug that. It's got a seal on it, so you just snug it up. Uh, you take that. So what you want to do now is on the back side of the caliper, I mean uh, the rotor, spray brake cleaner on it and you wipe it. And make sure you get all the grease and stuff from your hands on it, off of it. You don't want a dirty or a greasy uh, caliper or a rotor I mean and that dissolves all the old grease that you got all over it from when you were handling it well it does dry quick it does get the outside edge I can see why this would cost you a few bucks if you have somebody do this for you Oh yeah, and maybe a little bit up front here, just so there's no flinging grease anywhere. So how many cans of that brake cleaner? Have I gone through? Yeah. That's number five right there. So it's a little more than one per tire. Yeah. To spray out all the bearings and all that. And those are Kodiak brakes? Kodiak, yeah. So did you just order the same model number that were on the other ones? Yeah, I did. And these are okay. from E-Trailer, right? Right. And you can tell the one with this prong on it here is the one that goes into the cup. And this one goes on the outside of the caliper. So you take this and you flip it over. This one slides down here. Sometimes you can just hit them with a hammer and bring them in, but that isn't always the case. There we go. Got that one. So when you're putting in this shoe, mm -hmm. this metal tab has to hang over the edge of the shoe when you put it in there. Like that because that's what keeps the shoe in place, keeps it from dropping out when you're on the run. And there we go. And then with these bolts. No more neutral gloves? Yeah. Let me see what you got there. Show me in the tube. With these bolts, Show me the you got the Loctite Look. Blue. It's Red removable. Red Blue, removable. Okay. Removable. And you want to put a little dab on the end of their bolts. Like that. When you slide them in, they keep... You don't want to be driving down the road and have that bolt come out. That bolt comes out, you have no brakes. And also, you want to do it with the other one. There's two bolts to each side. A little dabble do on the end. And 
and then you crank them down with a ratchet. What size is that one? Half inch. You were staying all nice and clean. I was, till this point. Come on. Good and tight. Good and tight. Okay. Is that it? That it. And then you put the wheel on. How long did it take you to put the new brakes on each one? About 10 minutes. Oh, cool. Okay. Now you can put the tire on? Yep. Don't try. Okay. So you don't have to oil those up or anything? You don't want to oil them. Or grease or whatever? No. Yep. You don't want them working loose. Uh huh. How are you going to get them at the proper torque? After the wheels drop to the ground. I'll put a torque wrench on them. Oh, okay. To 150 pounds. Okay. So, this is your, what do you call this? A, a wheel cap? This is the hub cap. Hub cap. For the hub. What are, you, what are you doing there? These little clips, these little spring clips, go all the way around that. And when you take them off, they always jump out of place. Oh. So you gotta put them on back on, back on the clip. As this you, one doesn't have one. I know, I lost one clip. One of these days, I'll have to see if I can find one. Oh, this one's on the wrong side. There we go. All set. It's all plastic? Yep. So it just looks pretty. Yeah, it makes it look pretty. There it is. So once this you get the tires back down, then you'll be able to torque it. I'll torque them. Is that noise okay? Yeah. That's just the shoe rubbing a little bit. Oh, the new brake shoe? Yeah, on a rotor. Any uh, words of wisdom doing this? That's a simple project. Just it's time, that's all. And it's always good to do when you're in there, too. To look at your suspension parts and all that, your shocks, your IS rubber padding, the rubber pads and all that. Make sure everything's not cracked or it's all good and up to go.